What's going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm actually going to be talking about whether, you know, whether or not I think Evan Mobley was like the right pick for the Cleveland Cavaliers. And then of course talking about um, you know, what more I think we could have done in this draft. And I, I guess kind of recapping the uh, kind of robbery the Cleveland Cavaliers did on the Minnesota Timberwolves by bringing in Ricky Rubio. Again, before we get into all that, let's just try to talk about the whole Evan Mobley situation right now. In my opinion, I was absolutely, uh, I was really happy. Like, to put it simply, my heart was, like, sinking. I was so stressed, so like, oh, no. We might not be drafting Evan Mobley here. Like, I just had a sneaky feeling that we were going to draft Scotty Barnes or Jonathan Kaminga early because both of them worked really well in their, you know, pre-drafts. So I had the biggest feeling as well that if we didn't get Scotty Barnes, the Raptors were going to take him before, and then everyone was going to be shocked that they didn't take Suggs. Again, I kind of knew for some reason that, like, Barnes was going to get taken high. Apparently, his pre-draft workouts were insane. So I was just figuring, um, oh, man, you know, this guy, <laughs> he's going to get drafted over Evan Mobley. The Cavs are going to, the Cavs are going to draft him. Then the, the Raptors are going to get Evan Mobley and be absolutely insane forever because, they got a good center in. <laughs> like, I was just thinking, oh, no. But they did it. They brought in Evan Mobley. And why Evan Mobley is perfect for this team is because I still think he's too skinny to be playing that, you know, center position. So, he'll kind of come in and play this powerful position. I think he'll he'll be able to do it really, really well. Like, he's still learning his jump shot. Like, I think his jump shot will gradually improve over preseason. And then he'll probably, you know, take a season to kind of get used to the NBA, he would probably start off by shooting 33% from three or something. Probably not good numbers, but then I think it will get quite a bit better. I'm not even too sure if he'll start. Like, I know the Cavs really want to get rid of Kevin Love. I heard they're really trying to trade Jetty Osman too. So, like, they're trying to free up, you know, Cap. I know bringing in Ricky Rubio didn't really free up Cap, but in, in a sense, like, they just got their future backup point guard, who I think will be for the team, you know, for quite a while, I'm assuming. Like, he'll play the whole season, and they'll... Actually, he might not, because I believe he's got a team option, which they'll probably decline. Then he'll probably just say, hey, you declined my team option, I don't want to come back. I don't know. It's going to be a weird situation, but I think Rick, Ricky Rubio will be great for the Cavs, you know, next season, just being their backup point guard. But when we look at Kevin Love, they need to get rid of him, in my opinion. What team will take him on? Who even knows at this point? But hey, Evan Mobley, he'll be great. I don't know if he'll start because, of course, again, Kevin Love will probably still be on the team. Maybe they'll just bring Kevin Love off the bench and uh, maybe, of course, play him 25 minutes per game, which is what has been, of course, kind of rumored that they might, you know, actually do. So that will be, I guess, an interesting prospect in my opinion. But again, how this all goes will be really cool to see. When we look at Ricky Rubio, though, this guy, he's going to come into the Cavs, and he's going to be great. You know, they got rid of Torrey Prince. This team was actually getting too many power forwards, and yet all of them were still somehow getting injured. Like, Larry Nance had some injuries here and there. Dan Wade was pretty consistent the whole year. Um, Kevin Love just injured all the time. And then, of course, you had Torrey Prince, which they had to play a lot of minutes of small forwards. So they couldn't fit him really at power forward anymore. But getting rid of him was great. They finally, you know, freed up a meaningless, powerful position, you know, player. And kind of brought in a backup guard, which they really need. Now, I hope, you know, because of the Cavs of like, I think, eight future second round picks. I don't know if we'll be able to get Jetty Osman for like a second round pick. But if we have to get a second, you know, if we have to give a second round pick to give up Jetty Osman's contract, whatever. If we have to give up a bunch of seconds to get rid of Kevin Love's contract you're probably looking to do that as well. Um, whatever it's going to be. Or just let Kevin Love have a buyout or something like that. Um, but Nance is an interesting player. Like, there was a rumor at the deadline. Some teams were desperate for some power forwards last year and were interested in getting Nance. And there was a rumor that it was actually going to be an unprotected first round pick and a protected first for Larry Nance. Look, in my opinion, what you'll probably get for him now is an unprotected first, which will be a late first and a couple seconds. If we can trade Larry Nance Jr. right, and trade him to, wow, what's it, wow, the Chicago Bulls, they desperately need, like, a defensive power forward. 
if we could trade him to the Chicago Bulls, right, and we, who knows, I, I think, took on their bad contract in Alpha Rick Aminu, took on maybe an unprotected first round pick in the future, and then took on some second round picks, that would be great. And the Cavs, you know, they, of course, Alpha Rick Aminu is a bad contract, you probably just wave him or just keep him, I guess. And then you've got a first round pick and a couple seconds. Then this works out for the Bulls as well. Because you finally get in a defensive power forward that can still pretty much do everything. And be a really nice role player. And he extends their bench, really. And can you imagine if they signed Lonzo Ball, brought in Larry Nance. Um, I'd stay, you know, I'd still say bring back a currently a couple of the players they have now. Probably bring in a defensive center, which I'll probably be able to do. Maybe like a JaVel McGee type of dude. Which, who knows if you'll be able to get him. Maybe Dwight Howard, you know, might be able to pay him, you know, some money here and there. And then, of course, I think Kobe White, he therefore comes off the bench, which is really rumored. They've obviously started bringing him off the bench towards the uh, the end of the season. We saw that. Um, that's just pretty obvious. I'll let Larry Markin walk, I reckon. Daniel Tice, they can bring back, and then Thaddeus Young. Then you're really looking at a rotation, right, of two All-Stars in Zach Levine, Nikola Vucevic, at your shooting guard and center. Then at your point guard, you'd have Lonzo Ball, small forward, you'd have Patrick Williams, and power forward, you would have Larry Nance. And then off the bench, you would have Daniel Tice, Thaddeus Young, Kobe White, um, maybe some veteran players here and there, probably like Denzel Valentine. They're going to have a really good team if they can make this happen. That's a team that the Cavs could trade Larry Nance to. Um, but again, this, it's going to be really interesting. I still think that Larry Nance has done a lot for Cleveland, so trading him might be not the nicest thing to do. But, hey, if you can trade Larry Nance and bring in a bunch of picks and still bring in a dude like Alfred Amina, who, look, don't get me wrong, he's got a terrible contract. I mean, $10 million for a player that barely plays because of his injuries and only averages a couple points per game is pretty horrendous. But, hey, he might get, like, a couple minutes per game here and there as well. You might just say to him, hey, you can keep your two seconds and we'll also give you Jetty Osman. <laughs> like, who even knows? I know, I don't know. I think they can definitely trade Jetty Osman to a team and get a second round pick back. Some team will be looking to bring on a dude like Jetty Osman to see if there's any potential left in him. So I guess that could be, you know, kind of interesting to kind of see how that will, of course, all go. But of course, if you haven't already, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for all that's NBA content and NBA news. Of course, don't forget to subscribe to my gaming channel and my IRL site for long channels. Of course, don't forget to check out my podcast as well, if you haven't already, which I will all be linking in the description down below. Um, but of course, don't forget to comment your thoughts and opinions on this. Do you guys think the Cavs taking Evan Mobley was a good idea? Do you guys think the Ricky Rubio trade was a good idea? Do you guys think they'll trade Larry Nance, Jetty Osman, Kevin Love, etc.? And what do you think they can get back out of them? Of course, I'd definitely really like to know all of your thoughts and opinions on this all down below. But as I was saying, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.